first of all, I would like to thank the mercy of God, great virtues of holy masters, kindness of transmitters, lectures, and all of you to give me this opportunity to share the scriptures from Kuan Yin Buddha. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about a couple of stories. The first one is, uh, this is from CNN News. Uh, even the CNN uh, news on the Thanksgiving, we have about almost 63 million people worldwide got pandemic, uh, got infected. And then more than 1.46 million people, 1.46 million people die. And in US alone, US alone, we had more than 30 million people got it. And then more than 266,000 people passed away. Okay, so this is pretty scary numbers uh, for everybody. And uh, CNN was reported about his doctors, Joseph Verone. Uh, you know what happened to him? Uh, this, he has a patient, and this gentleman cried. And he felt the, the, the patient feel lonely and also miss his family, his wife and all family members. So he was crying. The doctor was uh, trying to comfort him. So Dr. Joseph Volon said there are so many patients like him, but he couldn't do one by one for all of them. Yeah, so it's pretty, very hard for those patients. Yeah, they miss their families. That's one story. The second story is there's one patient on, in the hospital. And this patient was in the hospital to get the treatment. However, by the time he was ready to discharge from the hospital, and this, the gentleman looked for his wife and daughter, his daughter, and he find out his wife and daughter already passed away in a period. So it's very hard for those people who lost a loved one or family members in these periods. So it's pretty hard for those people. So one more story I want to talk about. Uh, yeah, this is not show on the pictures. Okay. This happened in, uh, in the Texas area where we where we live right now, and then I saw a lot of cars on the highway. I was what are they doing? Okay, and then you can see all the cars are waiting to receive the food. Pretty scary how many cars are there? So it's more than eighty five hundred families waiting to receive the food. And then they've been in the car for to wait for 12 hours just to get the food. So a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people, families need the food to support themselves. So it's very hard at this period. And then almost more than 70 million people lost their job during this period. Okay, so it's very they are suffering for those families. So. We will feel for them. Yeah, it's very hard. Okay, let's come back to the scripture from Kuan Yin Buddha. This scripture is uh, conducted by Kuan Yin Buddha on May 4th, okay, in the Qing Yin Temple, which is one of our uh, temple in under Hua Yi. Under Fai, we have about 40, about 15 units under Fai. Fai uh, Tongyi, our temple is one of the units. Okay, so it's pretty big Fai uh, group. This is the scriptures named the Living Through the Calamities. This, there's a book coming out from Ming the bookstores. It's coming out with a book soon. Okay. Kuan Yin Buddha was talking about very sentient beings universally to propagate and the great Tao. 
live in an extraordinary life of sacrifice and contribution. So when you put up one of us, go out to ferry the sentient beings for them to receive down and to propagate down. And especially we are living in this very unusual lifetime. We need a lot of dedication, sacrifice, and contribution to the sentient beings. When you Buddha also talk about embrace one's mercy dearly. So we are the Buddha. You know what Buddha do? Buddha has a mercy, uh, always very kind to treat the demon, the sentient being. So when sentient beings are suffering, Buddha feel they are suffering too. So if we were the Buddha, so the sentient beings are suffering. So we are we feel we are suffering too. We feel for them. So be loyal to the true nature and deeply consider others. Okay, always feel for others, consider for others. Rescue lost sentient beings with the four immeasurable hearts. So that's what Buddha are doing. Okay, we will do the same thing. What are the four measurable hearts? Mercy, empathy, rejoice for others, and charities. So especially empathy when sentient beings are facing the difficulty, struggles, we feel the same way for them. When they are so sad, we fear for them. We are sad too. So that's, our, that's what Buddha are doing today. Examine the past to see to, to foresee the future. You know what Buddha said is what tell us. Examine the past for what we have done in the past lives, including this lifetime. So we can foresee the futures. So this pandemic is not the first time it's happening. Um, if everybody remembers, in 2002, 2003, we have a SARS. So human made those problems or ourselves. So it's not just from the heaven or from the God or from Buddha. We create ourselves because why? This is the law of cause and effect because karma, okay? Causalities. Then we create the, the causes, then we will suffer the result, the consequence. Ask of ourselves and then cut the mundane affinities. So Buddha Wang, Guan Yin Buddha Wang asks what? We always have to ask of ourselves. We have to ritual, ritual inspect ourselves. Why? What, what's the problem? Because we have to cut mundane affinities. Okay. Where are the mundane affinity coming from? Come from seven emotions and six desires. What are the seven emotions? Happiness, rage, sadness, joy, joyousness, love, hatred, and lust. So those are created problem for. Sometimes we are overdue. We can be a little. We can be a little happy, but don't overdo. Okay. I want to show you one picture. You know what happened? Just uh, happened uh, a couple of weeks ago. People try to have a happy time. These are uh, one of the Jewish leaders' grandsons waiting. There's waiting there for the grandson of the one Jewish leader. And then more than 7,000 people got together to celebrate. And what happened? In New York City. So this just happened two weeks ago. And then you can see a lot of people did not wear the face mask. So what happened? People get infected. That's the problem we can enjoy, but not like this. Okay. 
So Guan Yin Buddha tried to tell us we can have the heavy time, but we need to manage. We need to control. Okay. For ourselves. Yeah. Rejoice. What did rejoice mean? Rejoice means what does rejoice mean? Joyless. Because a lot of time we are so happy, but but in the meantime, we need to manage that, we need to control that. Then the other thing is rejoice, very important for all of us. Rejoice for us is some the other people are so successful. Other people are doing a good job. We should be happy for them. Okay? Don't have a jealous, jealousy in the, for them. So we need to be happy for them. So that's one of the affinity we need to have. That's also one of the merits we can have. And six desires. Okay? Those are so very critical too. So, uh, the forms from our eyes, the sounds from our ears, the smell from our nose, and taste from our tongue, tongues, and touch from our bodies, and dharma or thoughts come from our minds. Okay, so we need to manage all those six roots, six organs. Okay, yeah, because those create the karmas for ourselves. Tao rings through the universe, yet it cannot be seen, it cannot be heard. The each tongue display all of the all with comfort and joys those who take and fulfill vows until the end are equal to the saints and buddhas so buddha give a, a lot of message a lot of voice to all of us but some not all the people can hear that okay yeah only small percent of people population can hear that yeah but each, each tongue display all the, with comfort and joy for all the sentient beings. Okay. But next thing is very critical. Who take the valve and fulfill the valve? Take and fulfill the valve for some staff member, for some lectures, or maybe temple hosts until the end of the lives are equal to the saints and Buddha. So the saints and Buddha, they take, the valve, take and fulfill the valve and until the last moment, moments of their lives. So we need to do the same thing, okay? I am Pubei Guan Yin, okay? Pubei Pu Sa, okay? Under the degree of God, I have descended to the temple and pay obeisance to God, to God. So, The Buddha came to the temple. The first things they have to do is they have to bow to the, the God. We will do the same thing. Okay? And he asked us, and to you, what is How are you? He always asks, are you at peace? So this is very important for all of us. Are you at peace? Are you well? How are you? But that's what he means, what he she means is are you at peace too? Mm -hmm. With a magic pen in hand, I, I live with these scriptures. Heaven believe, taking and fulfill vows, practicing the principles and vows and achieve the confirmation. So there are four steps for us to cultivate. The first step is we need to have belief. We need to have trust. The Tao is true, for real, okay? And the mente is real. And the, all what we heard from the Buddha are real, are truths, okay? There are three types of people the Buddha cannot help. We don't believe. We don't have vows. We don't have affinity with Buddha. Then they cannot help us, unfortunately, okay? The next step is we need to take and fulfill our vow, okay? Yeah, so if we say we believe, but we don't take or fulfill our vow, Buddha can already help us, okay? Buddha, all the Buddha who are holy teacher, they only can point the way to go back to heaven, 
But if we don't want to go back, what can Buddha do? Buddha cannot do nothing. Okay, they only can show us how to get back. But we, 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 if we don't want to go back, they really cannot help us. The third thing is we need, after for a few of us, we need to practice and do it. Those principles and then involve. And the last step, the number four is achieving, achieving the confirmation. That means what? The position in heaven, lotus flowers. So hopefully one day all of us will receive Lotus flowers in heaven, in absolute, absolute heaven. The necessary step to guide one on the Tao journey. Okay, so those are the four steps for us to go back, step by step. Those four steps are the vital paths on the ladders to absolute heaven. So those are four important steps us to go back. It shows the direction that navigates one to attain Buddhahood. So Buddha told us it's easy to go there to become sense of Buddha, but are we ready to follow those steps to get there? Okay. I know some some of members in the temple called very really well on the path to go there. But sometimes we take a little easy and uh, we relax a little bit. So continue we need to continue continuously push ourselves to get there. Because when you put out, because one time I, I always talk about the uh, advantage to receive down. I always tell people who say, we can accept, escape, avoid the tragedies or calamities. But when you put out, talk about the biggest to escape, the calamities or tragedies is to avoid the reincarnation of the cycle of life and death. Sometimes we look only small picture. We say, how do we avoid this pandemic? How do we avoid to get sick? But Buddha point of view, how do we avoid the reincarnation of the cycle of life and death? So Buddha look a bigger picture of than all of us. So that's important. So we need to look into bigger pictures. In this lifetime, how do we avoid it? the inclination? Okay? How do we go back? Because Paul, sometimes it's pretty sad. Holy teacher said one time, he said, when we came, if we go back and we have to come down to reborn, we did not attend our position in heaven. We have to come down to reincarnate again and to cultivate again, to receive that and to cultivate. Holy teacher say, he may not be there for us. We may not even know there is a Tao for us to receive to, and to cultivate or to propagate. So we don't know. So the Holy teacher remind us, try to do this in this lifetime. Don't wait for next time, next life, because we don't know. Next time, Tao will be available for all of us. Receiving the Tao, receiving this Tao is precious. It's very special, very honor, okay? Its lineage is very broad and it's not easy to continue to transfer to this moment. So it goes through a lot of difficulty and challenge to get where we are today. Beginning with ancient stages and righteous kings, we reached Sijun eating Petra and Simu eating Matria after many generations. So you can see from ancient times, all days, only one person who can receive Tao. Only one master transferred the next masters. So, and then righteous kings also received Tao until to the Sijun and Simu eating Petra and eating Matria. And after 18 metria, then all the female cultivator can receive them. So before that, then I'm very hard to, for a female to receive them. Okay. Now it's with us. The patriarchs 
and the matches left behind their spirit. Yeah. So we, yeah, especially the, our patriot and matriot, eighteen patriot and matriot, left the mandates for us to receive down at this moment. We are pretty fortunate and lucky at this moment. But eighteen patriot and mat, mat, eighteen matriot are the last patriot and matriot. Okay. However, there's 19 patriots in, in Texas where we live right now. Some people come out by themselves. They say they are the patriots. So we have to be careful. Uh, we don't follow them. So, Sujun is the last one. Sujun and Simu are the last one for all of us. There's no more patriot matriot after that. Okay. But in Texas, there are, they have a 19 and 20. Patria coming out here. So, yeah, we have to watch where we're going. In the previous century, stop publications could not be stopped even by a storm of bullets. Okay. Life and death held no meaning to the cultivators. Their duties were to rescue people people's original souls, original spirits. You know, in, in the, our grand predecessor and predecessor, uh, cultivated and propagated down during the period of the, the war. And then also, a lot of the predecessors were cut by communist countries in China. They even lost their life. However, those predecessors, they are not afraid, they have no fears to lose their life because they want to save, rescue all the sentient beings, soul, the spirits. Yeah, so that's how brave they are. Yeah, so that's why we, we need to learn from them. Yeah. Kuan Yin Buddha talked about, they suffered many trials from the government and their own demon. So, because at that time, government will not allow the doubt to spread. Will not, people to, will not allow people to receive, cultivate, and propagate doubt. So they stop that. So if we cut, and they put, they put the, uh, those predecessors or cultivators in the jail. But they suffer because their own demon too, means their own evil spirit too, okay? In the past lives, you know, we all have to remember. Sometimes we only look for this lifetime, but we have past lives. We create some commas before, but we do not see that. Okay? Yeah. And then at the moment, the cultivators have created a dark path to rescue all the foreign, because those who could go down, okay, they try to save those sentient beings. So, pretty. At the moment, it's very hard for them to propagate it down. When Buddha also talked about, they were tested by earnestness and, and doubt. What's earnestness? People got sick. Do we want to continue to cultivate? Do you? Or you say, I don't have energy to cultivate. And all the tests of doubt by the doubt. There's so many times tests by doubt on adversities. Difficulties, misfortunes, or maybe doing everything so smoothly. If one one person is so successful, does the person want to receive doubt and cultivate and propagate doubt? May not. Okay, they want to enjoy lives, right? So there are all kind of tests are there. So Buddha always talk about what's the 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 biggest test for the doubt cultivator. And everything is so successfully, and everything is so beautifully. The life is so. Under control, yeah. then they do not want to receive down. Okay, they don't want to cultivate or propagate down. Okay, that's the deep, the most dangerous one for the living being. Okay, sentient beings. That's what Buddha is talking about. Yeah. However, the cultivators promised their everlasting loyalty and wholeheartedness to heaven. So. That's very special. The cultivators, the promise, their last, lasting forever is loyalty. 
because they, those cultivator is really really determined okay with a full heart to the heaven to the buddha to the god okay that's why they can become a saint and buddha okay we need to have the same kind of uh, determination now that the disasters has struck this world once once more in the form of a pandemic when buddha asked which mindset we hold okay so are we do we fear we might get infected or do we fear for the people who cause who suffer who are suffering now do we fear for them so she's she's asking what kind of mindset we hold right now if we are the buddha we fear for them okay do you show belief take and fulfill vows and hold compassion in your heart she's asking us do we hold show the trust and take and fulfill our vows and hold compassion compassions in our heart for all these sentient beings especially more than a week ago uh, in the south south america other country got flooded some country even got mass light during the pandemic period so they have different different kind of uh, disasters on them so even even harder than what we have here are you thinking of are you thinking and continuing the valves of predecessors so are we are we thinking about them are we continue for fear the valves of predecessors so when buddha is asking all of us i speak simply of having belief taking and fulfill valves practicing and the principles and achieve confirmation those are the four steps uh, we said that we need to get there okay my worst is under comprehend comprehend study and distinguish them well so when you put that one us to really understand really study and distinguish them well see each step it takes us to get there we cannot take halfway try to get there there's no shortcut okay sincerity is a source of doubt we need to have sincerity that's probably the most important things uh, for the cultivator to cultivate and propagate doubt okay it's the foundation of the merits and virtues okay so sincerity is so critical okay knowing all knowing that all buddhas advise us with the truth are we well are we willing to listen to the truth the advice advices from buddha sometimes we listen and then we forgot okay we forget all of them later on so we need to keep reminding we may not remember all of them but we need to keep remind we need to re remember the important part of them okay Know that everyone's Buddha nature is equal. Recognize the law of cause and effects. So, all everybody's Buddha nature is the same. It means the the Buddha nature of the Buddhas and the Buddha nature of our all of us are the same. Okay, we need to recognize the law of cause and effect, causality, because in this world, sometimes people say it's not fair. How come these people? Uh, have good life, live in a good environment, and we, some people are suffering. Why? It's not fair. But from cause and effect, the law of cause and effect is everything is fair because it's not just this lifetime only. We have to look into the past lives, cause and effect. Yeah, that's all communicate com combined together. So whatever we receive today is what we have done in previous lives 
whatever we can receive in the future lives is what we have done in this, life, this lifetime. So we have to look into what we're going to do. And then I remember one time I was on airplane to talk to the one person next to me. And then I was talking to him to receive that. You know what he told me? He said, I only worry about this lifetime. I don't care about next life. He told me he didn't care about next life. He only worried about his lifetime. So human being, we are, sometimes we have a little short-sighted. You know, we don't look into the future. Buddhas are different from human beings. Buddhas think about the futures, how to save sentient beings, okay? And we all worry about what, want to have good life, these good lives in, for the time being only. So if we have wisdom, if we can receive Tao, cultivate, propagate Tao, and without to escape the reincarnation of life and death, why not? I always say, why not, right? We cultivate maybe, other people maybe 30 years, 50 years, but we can achieve, Holy Teacher said, if we do it right, at least we have 10,800 years. 10,800 years in the absolute heaven, at least. But after that, it depends on individuals, virtues, and merits, okay? After 10,800 years, it depends on individuals, merits, and virtues, okay? So at least we have 10,800 years. But some people think, okay, 10,800 years are very long already. No, from heaven point of view, it's a very short period because we have reincarnated over 60,000 years already. So sometimes we have to understand that impact. The initial aspiration is essential as one begins the Tao path. This aspiration is very, very critical, very important. Why? Because our initial aspiration is the Buddha heart. In the beginning, when we were in, the, in heaven, we make a vow. We have initial uh, Buddha nature. Very critical for us to begin in the Tao path. So the Buddha always said, we can maintain the initial aspiration. That is with the Buddha nature, true nature. Then we can become Buddha again. Because we are the past, we are the Buddha in the past. We are the Buddha today. We are the Buddha in the future. So don't forget, we are the Buddha. Okay. I remember the, uh, when we are in Ohio, Iowa, and uh, even Texas, we have some other Nepalese. Those, some Nepalese came to this country because uh, they are refugees. Uh, they have financially, they have a, a lot of challenges and difficulties. But you know, one thing they know for themselves, then when you talk to them, they know, they knew they are the Buddha reborn. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that they are the Buddha reborn. Sometimes we have to tell ourselves we are the Buddha reborn. So holy teacher and all the saints and Buddhas keep remind all of us, we are the Buddha reborn. Don't forget that. We don't need anybody else just remind me, remind all of us again. We need to tell ourselves. Okay. The ten great vows giving one direction. Okay. So we we made ten great vows when we received Tao. But we also make ten great vows when we are at heaven. Vow taken in front of the altar of God and Buddhas are a driving force. So what's the reason we need to make a vow? Because when we make a vow in front of the altar, in front of the, in front of the God, in front of the Buddhas, will push us, will help us to get on the Tao journey step by step. We do have strong, great vows to help us to manage heavenly affairs. So we are staff members or we are lecturers. We do have a strong, great vow to help us to manage. Whatever we do are heavenly affairs. It's not maintenance affairs. That's a big difference. The position we have today in the temple, they are heavenly 
position, not position in the human world. A vow fulfilled with sincerity is precious indeed. Okay, so it's very important with sincerity to carry out to fulfill our vows. Carry out the three charities at once. Discover their true meanings, two meaning both outwardly and within. Three charities. The first one is uh, we can donate our money or donate our time and energy. Second one we share we can share with Dhammas. We can talk about Tao with others. The third one is we can when people are facing the difficulties or they fear, we can comfort them and help them. So those are the three charities we can do, okay? Very important to, to do it. Keep improving oneself, like ego, temper, bad habits, and physical forms. The most important is our bad temper and happy. That's before there are those are in Chinese we they always talk about gai mao bing qi pi qi, six words, which include fifty percent of cultivations. So if we can get rid of bad temper and bad habits, we already halfway there. Okay? And we also need to remove obstacles. Establish oneself step by step through the two cultivations. Because during the cultivation, we're going to receive, we're going to face a lot of difficulties and obstacles. But you know what? Don't be discouraged by that. Because those are the tests from the heaven. To become food and easy, it needs a lot of tests. Now, that's why holy teacher always talk about it. Buddha, even every Buddha talk about it. For cultivators, we face the tests. But we will not cult cultivate. We will face a lot of disasters, calamities. So which one is for us to rather to face the tests, the Tao tests? We don't want to face the calamities and tragedies, okay? Follow one's body to ferry the true nature through cultivation and propagation. So we need to bottle our body, our own bodies, to ferry the sentient beings and also make our true nature reveal through cultivation and propagation. We only maybe can live 80, 100, 120 years, Muslim, but we need to, to bottle this physical body, okay, to make our true nature reveal, okay? That's the most important, most important things. This cultivation. That's what Buddha taught us to do. To learn the Buddha nature class. To make our true nature reveal. Get rid of all the affinities. Do not raise a single thought for every moment. It's very hard to do, but we need to keep doing that. Okay? When we sit on the chair, when we lie down on the bed, when we're standing, we have st we stand, we can all do it. Get rid of all the affinities. Do not raise a single thought to keep that clear, still state as long as we can. Once you have, once you leave a good name on the earth, be granted a noble position in absolute, absolute heaven. So we need to do a good, good things and virtues. At the end, we can leave a good name when we leave this world. And then naturally, we don't have to ask for it. The God will give us a noble position in the heavens. So we need to keep doing that, OK? We don't need to think about, we want to get a position there. We just need to keep doing what we are supposed to do, okay? With our motive, okay? 
work on the fields of blessing and receiving a good harvest. So, Guan Yin Buddha wants us to work on the field of blessing, means to help sentient beings, to do good things, to do good deeds. And then at the end, we're receiving a good harvest, good result. Okay? Each day is of each day's cultivation brings one closer to their confirmation. What is their confirmation? Is attain the position in the heaven. Okay? So each day of cultivation, once you keep doing what we are doing, we are getting closer and closer each day. Okay? Hopefully, everybody can attend the Buddhahood. But most important thing, we need to keep doing, get rid of all the affinities, do not raise a thing or thought. Keep doing what we, holy teacher uh, what ask, asked us to do, okay? Work ceaselessly day and night, forcing, force, force, forcefully seeking noble achievements. I hope that you all this expanded your great wealth or great ambitions. Going by the book that I'm talking about, want us to what? Work continuously and without stop day and night, and positively seeking noble achievement, to push ourselves to get there. Okay, he wants to expand our ambitions. One time, Holy Teacher was in California, and then Holy Teacher talked to the two lectures. He said, uh, most of the time, we only use 20 to 30% of our potentials. We have uh, over 70% of potential we haven't used yet. So he asked all those lectures that include all of us to expand our ambitions, to use all our potentials, okay? Survive these calamities with a grateful heart. So especially for all of us, uh, a lot of people are suffering right now. So if we survive these calamities, we need to have a grateful heart. Those are the tests from the heaven. Those are the tests from heaven. Are we, are we afraid of it? Are we panic? Did you, and then also Guan Buddha want us to calm down, maintain the still heart. Have ferry oneself through the pandemics, through the cultivation, with four steps, we talk about the belief, taking and fulfill valve, practicing, and then achieve the lotus flower position in heaven. So every day we need to have grateful heart. You look at the world today. How many population are there? Over how many population are there? And how many people can receive that? And how many people, how many percent of people can cultivate and propagate Tao and listen to the Dharmas like what we are today? Could be 0.001% in the whole world. So we are pretty fortunate and lucky group. We need to cherish the moment to learn as much as we can. Holy teacher said that after pandemic, if we keep learning what we're supposed to learn, we will have a time to expand our knowledge uh, what we learned to use um, to propagate the Tao when, we, when the pandemic is over. And Guan Yin Buddha talk about she should start writing now. She bet all of us good wishes on parting. Yeah, so always wish, hope, always wish all of us are well. Pay obsessions to God. So Lamu is God, Lamu is God, okay? I should return to absolute heaven. That's a scripture on the May 4th. Okay, next scripture is on the one, on May 8th, okay? There's a total is 10 scriptures. 
and the, the first one and the last one are the conclusion and then there are a in between okay this is number eight and there will be a book probably in chinese i don't know if it's going to be an english book or not but at least a chinese book but we do translate to english here so everybody can read it and use those material this is the one on may 8th is in tian chin temple okay this is Tian temple is in uh Tuchen means the in the Taipei city in Taiwan. It's a north northern Taiwan. In Qingyin Temple. Guan Yin Buddha was talking about it's a greater blessing to give than to receive. Yeah. I show the pictures. You see that we have 8,500 people in Texas. They drove to the place to pick up the food. And they waited for 12 hours to get the food. We are pretty lucky if we can give rather than to receive. Okay? Rejoicing in others' success, others' success, and performing charity with this dissolved the three poisons. So when you put a talk about rejoicing, rejoicing means we can feel or show the great joy for others success or others happiness when people are successful we are happy for them okay we need to perform the charity okay what happened with this solve the three poisons that's are the most important thing after we get rid of bad temper and bad habit there are three other things we need to get rid of it three poisons the greedy the greed the anger or resentment and stubbornness or you call ignorance so these three items we need to get rid of them as much as we can before we leave this world okay besides get rid of our bad temper and habits those three items we need to get rid of them too good medicine tests bitters tests bitters Bring salvations to the world, thereby oneself with appropriate appropriate remedies. So most of the time. Oh, okay, I jumped. Sorry. Bring salvation to the world, thereby training our heavenly natures. So most of the time, when good medicine, they test bitters. Yeah. So a lot. A lot of people, especially the kids, they don't want to take medicine because of bitters. We need to bring salvation to the world. Okay. All days, those medicine uh, created by Buddhas, they try to save sentient beings. Okay. But the Buddha wants us to train our heavenly nature. Next one is to observe one's full thoughts. One's thoughts. And you will understand the problems. They treat everyone, treat oneself with appropriate remedies. And be cured, cured of character mistakes. Guan Yin Buddha was talking about, once we see our faults, you will understand the problems. So sometimes that's why we need to reflect ourselves, introspect, ourselves always look into what kind anything problem comes out we need to ask ourselves why the problem comes out we have it's our own fault don't blame on others it's not easy to do but we need to learn to do that treat oneself with appropriate remedy appropriate medicines or treatment to cure and to be cured with character mistake. From human being, we don't see these characters, personality, or our Buddha nature are critical. From Buddha point of view, they look at all this Buddha nature, how to make Buddha nature reveals, how to have virtues, how to have merits are critical, okay? The pure 
tongues of true echoes from Buddha for thousands and thousands of miles to wake us. So Buddha always tried to send a message, the pure tongue from the Buddha, to transfer thousands and thousands of miles to, to what? To wake us. Awaken. Are we still sleeping? Okay. Sometimes we, we, we tell people at night time we are sleeping. Sometimes we are also sleeping during the daytime. What does that mean? Because we are pursuing the fame, power, positions, wealth. We want a big car, big house. We want to all have all those material stuff. From Buddha point of view, they saw we are sleeping during the day not just sleeping during the night. Because they try to remind us, doesn't matter what we have, we cannot bring it with us one day when we leave this world. We cannot bring it with us one day when we go. So the Buddha tries to us, recognize the true principles. Do not lose the way. Okay? Always follow the true principle to cultivate. Don't get lost. Yeah, you can see the Buddha is really, really uh, try to help all of us. But sometimes you can see, sometimes you can see the scriptures. There are some stuff, some sentences are almost repeating. But Buddha try to tell us, remind us, advise us again and again. Okay. Sometimes we get sick. Okay, then sometimes the Buddha starts to send a message to all of us. I did remember one time, one transmitter, one transmitter, he was doing this, the, the job uh, of the secretary jobs in the temple. And he, she always had a headache. She always had a headache. And she didn't know why. And then one time when she passed away and came back to we, need, we, we connect to the, to come back in the re, re, reunion. And she told all of us, that's the message God and Buddha sent to her, that you are in the wrong position. Your job is, trans, you are the transmitter. You're supposed to go out to propagate it out. You should not be doing the secretary job in the temple, okay? So sometimes we didn't know that. Sometimes they try to send all the messages to all of us. I am Si Yao Guan Yin. Okay. Under the degree of God, I have descended to the temple and paid obsense to God. So the same thing, they take the vows to God. And to you, what is, are you well? Are you at peace? Ha ha. The pandemic descended to the world and has distributed to spread over everywhere. So it's pretty scary. Because Buddha always said, this pandemic has no color, no smell, and no borders. Could be anywhere. Okay. So, when Buddha wants us to apply the three treasures frequently to settle the body and mind. Okay. So, we can use the three treasures every day. We don't have to wait until the, we are facing difficulty or diff, dangerous. And we use three treasures. We can use three treasures, three treasures every day, but we don't speak out. Guan Yin Buddha said, in this, in this era, human minds have already moved away from their original attribute. People already lost. Okay, those human humanity has deviated. Okay, from what? From its ethic and priorities are long lost. So we need to find those back. Okay, especially that we talk about fairy parties uh, are so in, important in the temples. We need to respect the parents, take care of the parents, and we need to. 
help the family members, help all of them. Next one is greed, anger, or resentment, stubbornness, ignorance. Those three items are the items we need to get rid of. And actions contaminate, contaminate the mind with the, those three poisons, okay? So we have to be careful, okay? Yeah, every time I saw the scriptures, <clears throat> when Holy Teacher came down to talk to the transmitters, uh, we always try to say we need to get rid of those three items. The other thing is happiness, rage, sadness, and fears create sins and mistakes. People, right? Sometimes we we overdo. We need to maintain to proper degree, like happiness. Like you see the pictures for those seven thousand plus people can gather together, gather together for the wedding, the wedding. So that's pretty bad. People are happy, but no, we need to manage to control that because other people are going to suffer after that. Sometimes we have a fear because of the pandemic, but Buddha always teach us to calm down, to have a still state, to have Buddha nature in charge. The pandemic strikes extreme fears into the hearts of human beings. Is that right? Right? People are afraid to get rid of it. To, to get it. Okay? To get it. But what I said before, besides this one, the most fear we should have is we cannot avoid the reincarnation. Okay? The human world was transformed into a bitter seed, a pitiful sight indeed. Because people, a lot of people, a lot of sentient beings are suffering. That's what Buddha and God do not want to see. Because in the bitter seed, you know why Buddha see us in the bitter seed? Because no matter what we have in this world, even we have good life, good lives, we are still under the reincarnation of the cycle of life and death. We cannot get out from this bitter seed. That's why to receive Tao, to cultivate, to propagate Tao, to get out from, the, from this bitter seed. Long ago, the true Tao descended to human world by heaven's mercy. So that's why we are pretty fortunate and lucky group to receive Tao, to cultivate and propagate Tao. But we need to bring more, bring more sentient beings to receive that. Seek the enlightened holy teachers to awaken one to receive the Tao and reveal the three treasures, three treasures to them. Okay, so we need to, we are pretty lucky to receive Tao. In the, fortune, in the meantime, we need to we more people to receive Tao and then to know the three treasures so they can go back with all of us together on the Dhamma board. It's not just we go back by ourselves. If we go back up there and our family members, our parents, our children, or loved ones do not go with us, we, put it, we will be pretty lonely there, okay? Work hard in cultivating and propagating sincerely to, uh, to establish virtues and merits. So Guan Yin Buddha want us to work hard in cultivating and propagating sincerely, okay? S uh, establish to build up the virtues and merits. These are two most important things we need to build up, okay? Then hopefully one day when we leave this world, we have more virtues and merits than our bad karma, okay? Before the great calamities strike, hasten to find the Tao with oneself to transcend the cycle of the life and death. So when Buddha keep talking about those, 
how to transcend, how to escape the cycle of life and death. Okay? We need to find the Tao to, to receive, to cultivate, to propagate. Okay? We need to do that quickly. Okay? Buddha was so kind and patient to, with all of us. Especially to, we are pretty fortunate and lucky. Buddha could remind us. You see, a lot of Buddha came down, keep talking to us. Yeah. But sometimes we don't take seriously. Okay. The, the heavenly portal, we talk about three treasures now. The, the first treasure is the heavenly portal is the gate connecting us to the absolute heaven. Okay. One time I was, I remember when I received that, I do not know the first treasuries. Uh, then Holy Spirit came down to you in the Dhamma class, talk about first treasuries is only the gate for our Buddha nature to pass through when we leave this world. Okay. It's a gate now. Our Buddha nature doesn't reside or stay in first treasuries positions. So it's just a gate. The first treasure is just a gate. The location just a gate for the pass through. It's the gate of the life and death. Why is the life and death? Because once this gate is open, then our Buddha nature can pass, can pass through them. To awaken to the source of our true nature. So we are pretty fortunate and lucky. Uh, enlightened Holy Master, he opened the gate for all of us. Correct all of the one's thoughts and rest the mind in one place. So the here, what does that mean? It means we we want to get rid of all the affinities, do not raise a single thought. Raise all the mind in one place where in the Buddha nature. Okay, with our thoughts. Okay. With our thoughts. Okay. Once two eyes guide the center to restrain, restrain wandering thoughts it's very dangerous because we all have wandering thoughts all the time and then uh, Buddha keep reminding all of us one thought will plant one seed of reincarnation so you can imagine how many thoughts we have each day and we how many seeds of reincarnation we have planted every day so the most important thing is no thoughts without thoughts okay trying to maintain that every second, every moment, okay? That's the most important thing. When Buddha is sitting there, what do they do? They don't have any thoughts, okay? Human being, we have a lot of thoughts. So that's a big difference there. Thinking, of, thinking about neither good or evil, no evil. Settle down once while mind and do not walk against the flow of affinities. So Buddha tried to teach us to how to get rid of affinities. Do not raise a single thought. Think about, don't think about good or bad, good or evil, okay? Settle down on one's wild mind. Means what we are thinking, don't, we have to calm down. Don't let our mind, wild mind coming out. And we need to follow the affinity. Do not walk against the flow of affinity. That's very important in our life. Sometimes, sometimes people try to get a good, good connection from others or good relationship, try to get, get a benefit. That's not what Buddha suggests us to do, to do. Buddha said that kind of affinity will have a consequence. We will suffer one day. We will receive the consequence one day, okay? So we always have to follow the affinity, okay? Do not try to take advantage. Yeah, or if I know some, some special person, I will get advantage. I will benefit from them. So we don't want to have those, those kind of thoughts. Seven more emotions we talk already. Mm -hmm. And six desires, okay? Remember those items, okay? The holy mantra. We talk about second treasures. The holy mantra connect directly to absolute heaven. Okay. Speaking the mantra is a heart-to-heart -heart transmissions 
that touches touches heaven. So the mantra is a heart to heart transmission. Okay, in the old days they don't talk. So the master transfer the mandate to the next one. They need to have a heart to heart transmissions. They don't use paper to talk or the words to talk about. Okay. So those five words we need to remember. Okay. When you Buddha talk about the two sutra has never been found on paper. Okay, it's a heart to heart trans transmission. Practice it with sincere heart to achieve non attached concentration. What is non attached concentration? It means no thoughts. That means our Buddha nature, okay, is in charge. Second one is steer. Calm and steer states without interference by other mundane material, materials or matters. So we will not be affected by those maintained, maintained uh, stuff. Like fame, power, wealth, big house, big cars, those all those stuff do not even affect all of us. And peace. So Guan Yin Buddha always asks about are we at peace? And each time she came down, she will ask peace. Means we need to know where we are in what situation. No matter what do we do, we all have peace in our mind. And we is anything we do not against Tao principles, okay? Having receiving the Tao, waste no time to recite and uphold the heavenly and holy, holy mantra. So when we receive Tao, we need to recite and hold the holy mantra. We need to remember. We need to remember, you know what? When one day, if we leave this, we, we leave this world, we forgot three treasures. You know what happened? Somewhere becomes wandering spirits cannot go back. They happen to some of our town members, okay? And then, if their children or offspring can cultivate, propagate it down then we can go back or they can go back. If their children or their offsprings do not cultivate, then what? They always stay outside of temples or outside of southern mountain gate in front of the holy teacher. They cried. They asked holy teacher to, to ask their children to cultivate. Because once we forgot three treasures, we couldn't go, they couldn't go back. Once they forget, they couldn't go back. So we, we had, one thing the introducer, carpenter are very important. When people receive Tao, we need, to, uh, we need to ask them to come back to review three treasures. If one day they go back, they forget three treasures. They will blame our, their introducers and sponsors. So introducers, and sponsor got some credit merit when their friends or their people to receive down. But those cultivate those those people who receive down but forget three treasures will bring the introducer and counters one day if they cannot go back. Hurry to see through the crucial moments where you can, one can rise or fall. Yeah, so up and down. Fall means what? Go back to reincarnation. Okay, to stay this six paths of reincarnation. We cannot go back, get out of this uh, cycle. Dukkha, yeah. 
hold the holy oh, now we talk about the third treasure third treasures hold the holy covenant covenant the childlike heavenly nature okay one should transcend the great calamities of the end so we need to maintain the childlike heavenly nature okay to avoid escape the calamity of the end and yeah, that's the three treasures so treasures everyone must harmonize <clears throat> and unify restraining oneself and restore one's benevolence and priorities get rid of bad ones tempers and bad habits okay here was Guan Buddha wants us to must harmonize and unify, okay? And we need to, to restore our benevolence and proprieties for ourselves. And in the meantime, we need to get rid of this bad temper and the bad habits, okay? If we want to go back as a Buddha. The covenant is returning to the roots and reunit us with the source to recognize Namu, Namu is God. Yeah. So the third treasure will help us to go back to the root, okay? To reconnect us to the, to the God. Return to one's childlike true nature and appearance. So that's very important. We want to return to that. Yeah, we want to restore our, restore our true nature. We do, everybody do have a true nature. We, sometimes we call Buddha nature. So Buddha nature of the Buddhas and saints are the same Buddha nature of every, of ours. There's no difference. Only things we have bad temper, bad habits, three poisons, greedy, greed, anger, ignorance, or stubbornness. Sometimes we also have attachment and desires to block our Buddha nature. To nature. Buddha also talk about it. Kuan Yin Buddha also talk about it. one must sincerely introspect constantly. So every one of us need to sincerely introspect constantly if we want to become a Buddha. Okay? Paying deep this deep respect to one's true nature. Yeah, because make our true nature in charge. And apply the three treasures in daily living or daily lives, not departing from the Buddha mind. So every day we need to have a Buddha mind in our heart. Use the Buddha mind to do things. No matter what we face, what we suffer, or what we are doing, we need to always maintain Buddha heart. Always think about when we want to do something, we think about if, if Buddha is here today, what will Buddha do today? Okay, if we are the Buddha, what should we do? Okay, not just what we should do. Okay, if we were the Buddha, what Buddha would do? Okay. Constantly restrain oneself with each every actions. You now, who is doing the best on this action, this item? Our predecessor. Two sage of great virtue, Da De Zhenjin. He did the best on this one. He restrained himself very well on walking, living, sitting, or lying down to sleep. He did, he's doing the best. The true selves rest in calm state to settle the body and mind. Okay. So every day we need to do that. Make our true self rest in still state to settle the body and mind. Okay. Taking a bow reminds one of the true lives. Okay, in Chinese, this means the word is uh, taking a bow is uh, one's faith and lives. The mind must focus without thoughts. When one bows to dedicate merits to others, so when we try to dedicate 
the merit to others. We need to focus. Our mind need to focus with our thoughts. Holy teacher talk about and Kuan Yin Buddha talk about it. Once we have a thought, our merits was cut to half. Okay. The true meaning of the bowing is to humble ourselves, bring the mind back to the introspect, and make one's true nature reveals. Okay, so this is very critical. Yeah, sometimes we bow in front of the altars. We are not bow to the, the Buddhas only. We try to learn from their spirits, from their action previously. We also try to be humble for ourselves too. We also want to bring our Buddha nature out. I hope that all of you worth this uphold the three treasures in cultivations. In cultivation. Escape calamities and sufferings. Transcend above disasters and mistakes. So Queen Buddha at the end, she's hoping all of us worth it. She's she called us worth it. Means we are doing we are cultivate very well. So she called us worth it. We need to keep the three treasures in cultivation. We try to avoid escape from the calamities and sufferings. Okay? That's how beautiful the three treasures are. And then also for us to cultivate and propagate it down. We need to trans we can transcend above the disaster and mistake. We can avoid the reincarnation. Okay. Having spoke this spoken this, I raised the J pen. Okay. I should pay options to God to return to absolute heaven. Ha <laughs> ha, retreating. So these are the two scriptures from Guan Yin Buddha. And we have two more scriptures next time we will talk about it. And then at the end, if I say something improperly, I ask the forgiveness from the, the God and Buddhas and Holy Masters and ask for the advice from all of you to give me some advice if I say something properly. Thank you, all of you. <laughs>